today we're going to be talking about the product and the quotient of powers. First thing I'm going to do is talk about the product of powers property. So let's start out with uh, two numbers here written in exponential notation. I have 5 to the 4th and I'm going to multiply that by 5 to the 3rd. So really that means 5 to the 4th, 1, 2, 3, 4, four fives being multiplied by one, two, three, three fives. So what we see is that I have a total of seven fives being multiplied together. Again, my exponent here is seven, and in exponential notation I see I have um, five being multiplied together seven times. And that also works the same with uh, variables as well. If I have a to the fifth times a to the fourth, I have a times a times a times a times a times a, so on and so forth. You get the idea. That a is being multiplied together nine times. So using exponential notation, um, we see that I have a total of nine factors of a. So that shows me that I have a to the ninth. So maybe what you might be seeing is there's a relationship when you have similar bases. And that's what we're going to explore here with the product of powers property. Um, and that means that whenever I'm multiplying two similar bases, a to the, uh, um, what I'm just going to do is then add the exponents together. So in this case, I have a to the m times a to the n. I have two similar bases in a. What I do is simply add the exponents together to get my answer. And that is the product of powers property. We can see that in a couple of examples here. So I have 6 to the 4th times 6 to the 3rd. Instead of writing out, you know, 6 times 6 times 6, so on and so forth, I can just take that base, add my exponents together, and then I have 6 to the 7th. Same thing over here. I have negative 4 in parentheses squared times negative 4 in parentheses to the fifth. So that means I'm just going to take that negative 4, that's my base. Again, just add the exponents together. And then I'm left with negative 4 to the seventh. And that's okay if I have a variable as well. The product of powers property still applies. And I'm left with my answer of f to the ninth. This also works with algebraic expressions. Um, I'm just going to take these values individually over here. So I have b to the second, c to the third, times b to the fifth, c to the fifth. I'm going to go ahead and start out with b to the second, b to the fifth. So I see I have b to the 2 plus 5 times c to the 3 plus 5, and that's going to get me b to the 7th, c to the 8th. There's my answer. Now, once we start adding a coefficient, you want to make sure to multiply those values together. So I have 2 times 3, which is 6, and then I have x to the 4 plus 2, y to the 2 plus 6. So if we clean this all up, 2 times 3 is 6, x to the 6th, y to the 8th. And then, another example, and again, at any time, if you want to pause these, go ahead, do it on your own, see if you get the right answer. Feel free to do so. I have 4 times 5, s to the 4 plus 4, t to the 3 plus 6. When I clean that all up, I have 4 times 5, which is 20. s to the 8th, t to the 9th. All right. Next property I want to talk about is the quotient of powers property. So now we're dealing with division, but you'll see there's a bit of similarity in the rule itself. For example, if we start out with 4 to the 6th divided by 4 to the 2nd, I have similar bases, 
So in essence, that would be me taking 4 times 4 times 4 times 4 times 4 times 4 and dividing it by 4 times 4. If you want to take a look at it this way, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, divided by 4 times 4, what you can see is if I'm going to cancel out the similar numbers here, 4s and 4s cancel out, that leaves me with 4 to the 4th. Or again, with c to the 7th times c to the 4th, if I want to rewrite that as c times c times c times c times c times c times c, c to the 7th divided by c to the 4th, 2, 3, 4. Then when I cancel out values, I see that I'm left with c to the third, and over here I was left with 4 to the fourth. So maybe, again, just like before, with the powers, uh, product of powers property, you might see a relationship between the exponents here and your final number. Exponents here, 7 and 4, 3. And that leads to our quotient of powers property which shows whenever we have a to the m divided by a to the n, so you have exponents with similar bases being divided. Um, that's the same thing as setting them over each other into a fraction, but the main idea here is that you're subtracting the exponents. So I have similar bases, different exponents, as indicated by the different letters here a to the m divided by a to the n means what I simply need to do is keep base the same and then just subtract the exponents. Let's go ahead and take a look at an, a couple of examples then. So I have 2 to the 9th divided by 2 to the 6th, which means I keep my base 2, I subtract my exponents, and my answer is 2 to the 3rd. I have 5 eighths to the 6th plus 5 eighths to, uh-oh, there's nothing here. No need to panic. That just means we have 1 5 eighths. So I have 5 eighths to the 6th. I'm not going to write that out because I know the quotient of powers property. And so I'm just going to subtract the exponents. And my answer is 5 eighths to the 5th. Now, in this case, if you're just asked to simplify you're okay with your answer in this form. But if you're ever asked to evaluate, then that means you need to actually do the work to get some large, large and cumbersome number. But you don't need to do that right now, we're just simplifying. What about an algebraic expression over here? So h to the 6k to the 2nd divided by h to the 5th k. Well, I can take h to the 6th k to the 2nd, and I'm going to rewrite that as h to the 5th k, just so I can see what I'm doing here separately. I have h to the 6th divided by h to the 5th and k to the 2nd divided by k. Again, I'm doing this out the long way, but you probably have already arrived at the answer if you're doing this yourself. So I have h to the 6 minus 5 k to the 2 minus 1 which gets me h to the first, which we can just write as h, and k also to the first, which we can just write as k. So our answer here becomes just hk. Now, for our first challenge problem. Here's how it's gonna work. From time to time, I'll give you a challenge problem. You get to try this out on your own, if you dare, and then we discuss the answer to the problem in class. So our first challenge problem is b to the third, c to the eighth, divided by b to the second, c to the fifth, times b to the seventh, c to the eleventh. I will say here, order of operations is important. Good luck.